We started ages ago, by the way. But I'm just oh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I love karaoke, song. so I don't mind singing. Okay, choose a song. Let's do it in the end. Once we wind up. This is my house. Okay. Oh, look Stop at telling you. me what to look do in my you. house. I don't like this. Look okay. At you. I don't like this. <laughs> Guys, I would love to, well, I would love to, uh, it's time to introduce my uh, next guest for today, Dr. Sara Al-Madani. Why do you say it like that? I don't know, I feel like doctor. Doctor, is, uh, uh, yeah, doctor right? Sara. You know, in all the time that I've known you, well, let's just state the date today. Today is the 5th of, 5th of uh, April, 2018. No, no, that was when we were first going to film, right? Okay, today is you the are today so is the sixteenth. Today is the sixteenth of February, two thousand and twenty. No, no, that was the second time we were gonna film, right? Don't make me sound like I ditched you. No, no, I'm just saying. No, no, the real date today is we're on the fourth time, right? I was filming. Yeah, I love you. Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk, guys. In all this time, I've never asked you, doctor of what? So I have an honorary PhD in yep. women empowerment and business leadership. Mm. Although I hate the word empowerment. Okay. I don't think women need empowerment. No. Did you ever see a bunch of guys hold hands and say men empowerment? It depends which part of London you're in because <laughs> there are some parts of Soho <laughs> where, yes, <laughs> I have seen that. The point, the, the point is that I think that women are strong and when you say women empowerment, it's like you're begging for, for something that doesn't belong to you. So I, bef I feel women need inspiration. Only. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very kind of... Uh, boys club old school man way of thinking that women ain't strong and definitely definitely any man that says a woman ain't strong has not seen labor before no. because i was there when my twins were born and i remember easy. looking over at my wife and going oh you're a beast okay <laughs> yeah i'm not messing with you ever again <laughs> did you see dude, that dude i delivered them myself oh. like it you was know, insane, you know, not, not a lot of men can do that. Yeah, dude. Everyone's like, oh, you got to be on that end. And I was like, nah, bro. I want to be <laughs> <laughs> line of fire, man. I want to <laughs> be right there. Yeah, it was a crazy experience. But oh, you just, wow. You have guts. Because most men like faint or walk no, away. No, no. I wanted like, okay, this is where I get all spiritual and stuff like that. But I wanted like the f them to come from her and the first piece of skin they touch to be me. Yours. To, to just to make that circle of life. Did you lift the thing. baby? Yeah, one of them. You and did? then they were like, there's another one. I was like, all right, put this one down. Did you put it. ketchup on? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay, got it. Simba. Simba. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> so, dude, you have been in business. And it, it's crazy to think this. Uh, you've been in the business in the limelight since you were 15 years old. Yeah. And that's kind of depressing to me because I was playing Pokemon when I was 15. You know, okay, I'll be honest. When I started my business at the age of 15, my cousins were like outside eating sand and playing with cars yeah. and Barbies. And in my mind, that kind of playing did not register to me. Like okay. I was way beyond my age. And I remember when I was born, like verbatim. <laughs> verbatim I remember when I was born, my dad, literally. Literally. Yeah. No, my dad verbatim, like this yeah. way he told me. He was like, um, when you were born, you started walking at the age of nine months. Yeah. No, sorry, talking at the age of nine months, walking at the age of 10 months. Me and your mom looked at you and we're like, she's either an alien or she's going to be trouble. Yeah. So he's like, we knew you were going to be trouble and you were always ahead of your age. You were way mature than your age. So by the age of four, I was massaging everyone in the family for money. And I was, I was, <laughs> and it was really expensive. Like it was like back then, Yeah. it was like an hour so massage. So you had your rates and oh everything. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had a rate card. Yeah. So I would do a uh, one hour massage for like um, 50 dirhams. But we're talking about back then, that was a lot of That's money. That's a lot of money, yeah. But uh, hold on, I did not even finish the hour. I'd go 10 minutes in and walk away. Like, but and you'd have the 50 dirhams. I had the 50 dirhams. And yeah. then by the age of six, I knew I had a bunch of cousins who were not allowed to go out of the house because their parents are very like, you yeah, know, yeah. worried about them going out. So I used to go out, buy candy and then resell it at a double price because they can't mm -hmm. go get it. So if you ask me, what were you thinking? I don't know. It just happened naturally. It was like an instinct in me. So essentially you were a horrible person to your family, to be honest. You Some were just like ripping, like that. going around ripping everyone <laughs> off in the household. I wouldn't say it like that. It's no, business. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's business. It's business is well, business. Your cousins, they don't have no money. Haram, they just want sweets all they want. They had like, I'm money surprised and I you were, I'm surprised you were like, look, okay, you're not allowed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm allowed out. 
I'm going to take videos of how fun being out is and sell you the footage so you can feel like, you know, a POV that you're swinging. Yeah, something like that. Thing. But there was no Could've cameras worked. back then. But I did make them feel bad about not going. That's why I charged double the price. All right, because it's, it's, it's a hard life, right? You it's need a to, hard knock you life, you know, yeah. You need to do it. So what was <laughs> your first business at 15? Um, I started in fashion design. Okay. Um, I had no idea. I was, I was a tomboy, so I wasn't mm. even into fashion. But I wanted to always change the way women wore their traditional uh, clothes in the UAE. And I wanted them to look more stronger because back then there was no, um, the pattern was very flat. It was yeah, like yeah. a black layer only. So I felt like, why can't I just change that? And I started at 15. Um, I paid uh, key money uh, with my partner, um, key money to get a store with staff. So my staff were like in the age of 35, one was 42, one was 29 and I was 15 and trying to be a boss. You were like coming in on a scooter. Guys, we're having a meeting in 10 minutes. Yeah, like and literally, by the way, yeah. funny enough, nobody took me seriously. For, for six months, I yeah. would order them to do things, trying to get the business running. They would not listen. And, yeah. and like the guy would say, hey, bache, bache. like an Indian, he would tell me, you're a kid, you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. Until later on, you know, we figured out a vibe and we became friends and then, you know, things kicked out and the business started growing and growing. And is, is that business still going now? No, uh, being 20 years a fashion designer, the passion died. Yeah. Um, it's basically the culture teaches you that, you know, you should never stop something you did because, you know, it's bad, it's aib, no yeah. one should, like, it's failure. But what they didn't teach you that passion comes and goes, it dies, mm. you know, new ones come out, uh, it's completely normal. So for, after passing 15 years of doing it, I felt like I had no emotions towards it, but I was too scared to walk away because then it's yeah, yeah. it'll be considered failure. Until I realized that failure is not what I've been taught and it's not that scary. And after 20 years, I made a decision and I just left it. I, I'm not into it. I don't even have emotions towards fashion anymore. And I mean, did you come from a family where your, your father and your mother were very business orientated or no? Or no not not at, at all, nobody. We hardly have any business people in the family. I can count them on my finger. Um, I mean, in the whole family. Yeah. But my, my dad, no, he's an aerodynamics engineer, airplanes and all that. Mm. My mom is a teacher. Uh, my sister and brother, they have normal jobs. Like they, they went to university, you know, worked hard for their degrees. I was the street smart, rebellious one, you know, who, yeah. you know, the black sheep in the family. Who was ready to go. Ready to go. Okay, talking about black sheep, I think it's important that we talk about this. Yeah. Um, it must be quite difficult having to navigate your way through being an Arab woman. Again, we spoke about this before. Yeah. Who wrote the handbook of what an Arab woman should be yeah. and being a local and also saying, but guys, hey, this is me. This is what I like to do. Yeah. How did you, let's say in the beginning, was there a fear in the beginning of doing that or were you just always just like, look, this is just the way it is going to be? Of course, in the beginning, I was trying to fit the mold because that's what I was taught, br brought up, that, you know, we have to all act in a certain way, look a certain way, you know, we represent a certain thing. Mm. But I feel like um, I freed myself from that stereotype because it was chaining me to the ground. Like, no matter how far I wanted to go in life, that fear would always, like, take me back and go like, mm. oh, what if they say this? What are they going to think of me? And no, that's not how a woman should act, blah, blah, and all that. But I went on a self-discovery journey uh, when I was at the lowest point in my life. And like I, w I hit rock bottom, I was depressed, I, I went through a lot, betrayal, you know. And How this old is this? This was when I was 20, uh, I know, 29? Okay. Okay, 29, 30. Uh, I'm 36 now. So when I went through that journey, instead of like saying, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, life is shit, it's unfair. And, uh, instead of like playing the blame game, mm -hmm. I was like, why am I here? Why am I born? Like, what's my purpose in life? What's the message God is trying to send through me in this world? Everyone has a purpose, right? We have a, a, a date where we're born and a date where we're expired, where we're gone. But in, in between, mm. who am I? So when I went on this self-discovery journey, and that's, I feel, that's when I freed myself. And I was like, I don't have to fit to mold. I can look and act the way I want. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, w like, it's fine. Mm. And the minute I took that decision, was the minute my creativity evolved, my spirituality evolved, my personality evolved. Like I became the best version of me. Mm. And it was like, and, and to me, this was the definition of freedom because in the past, 
freedom meant to me traveling whenever you want yeah, going yeah. out with friends whenever you want having a car going out no one to to uh, like not telling your parents where you're going or or anyone and it was such a wrong definition of freedom mm. until i realized no no definition of freedom is here it's freeing this mm. from judgment from like stereotype from like trying to fit in like god please don't make me fit in i, I even if i'm left alone i would never want to fit in anywhere and then you realize when you go through that transition people around you just fall apart mm. you know the people who yeah, yeah. you know are not really friends or you know family members who don't really support you and they wanted you because they wanted you in a certain way they all things as a representation or extension of, extension of, where, of yeah. them so everything just fizzled away and i was left alone with a small circle but i've never been any ha like i've never been happier mm. to be honest when like you say small circle is that the funko pops that you have surrounding you me and my toys <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah, me and my toys. we'll get into that later <laughs> because that's, a, that's that. a whole other thing that we yeah. have in common okay but how I, I understand you saying i decided to it's a lot easier said than done especially coming from the arab world we have this shame mm -hmm. not only I mean, I mean look if you're english and you decide to go and put a bone through your nose nobody uh, cares nobody cares yeah. but here it's the trickle on effect of we're very much of I don't want other people to judge us as a family yeah. and talk to us so how did you kind of navigate that and, and how easy was it for for everyone to be like oh, we knew she was going to be trouble from the beginning so just let her do a thing I mean look it was never easy mm. my parents always like you know they kind of disagree with a lot of things I do although it's like not even a big deal but I do understand that the pressure from the culture, from the surroundings, I understand all of this. But I think the best approach I took is to be logical. Mm. Why are you upset because I look this way? Does it make sense to you that you're upset because I don't look the way mm. you expect me to? Mm. Does, it, does that even make sense to you as a human being? You are taking it personal that I look different than you. How, how does that even make mm. sense? I mean, when you think of it from a logical perspective, it's like, why? Mm. Is there it logic, though, in a lot of decisions that are made it's by, it's by our logic. families? Yeah, no, but, but this is logic. Um, look, I, I, I went through a spiritual journey, and I believe that we are spiritual beings with a human experience. Mm -hmm. So whatever you see here, this is my dress, okay? And I get to dress myself the way I want. My skin, my hair, my, my face. This is the dress, but the real me is inside. This is my soul, my spirit. And this is why, like, I always tell people who tell me, you've changed. Mm. You were more different before. Now you've changed. No, celebrate me. I've evolved. Yeah, yeah. I've grew. I have not changed. You're my beautiful butterfly. Beautiful <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> you knew me in my cocoon. Yeah, so, so I think that basically if you look at me as, like, uh, a spirit and not just, like, a body because this is just, like, temporary, mm. you would realize that, y you know, if there's no judgment, there's so much room for love. If, there, if you don't judge, there's room to love. You know what I mean? And I always tell people this. I said, w what changed in me? The way you look. Okay, amazing. What else? Your hair. You got tattoos. You got. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, yeah, but uh, the character, the personality, the ethics, yeah, the morals. The way I treat you, has that changed yeah, the, the person? Exactly. Yeah. My respect, the way I treat you, did that change? No. So how did I change? So it just doesn't make sense just because I don't look like you expect me to, that I'm rejected. Well, how yeah, let me be rejected. Hmm. And I you're just happy to just be like, to I'm go on and Oh my do God, it. I'm so liberated. Hmm. It's not like I'm running around like naked and stuff like that, but it's like I'm liberated because I don't feel like I have to satisfy anyone. I have one hmm. life. Once I'm gone, I'm gone. I can leave, leave this place and die now. Hmm. And I, when I'm gone and I'm like, you know, 10 feet down the ground and I can't come out anymore, I want to know that I lived a life that was true to me, satisfying my wants, my needs, and not living for the approval of others. How mm. sad is this to live a life waiting for approval from others? Well, th I guess that's that's uh, being rich spiritually, right? So yeah. if you look at, I'd say, 9 out of 10 rich people that I know, and I'm talking rich, I'm talking, yeah, I, I don't have to do anything for the rest of my life money. Yeah. They dress in a normal white t-shirt exactly. and shorts on it because they don't have to impress the other people. You find everyone else buying Louis bags and, uh, out of their salary and they can't really afford them, but they want to put the illusion that they're rich, yeah. right? So I guess when you're spiritually rich, like you don't really care what the person sitting next to you thinks at all. You're just like, well... I mean, this, uh, this is something very important. Like, I believe, okay, if you if somebody knows Sarah, they know <coughs> that Sarah does not care... Dr. Sarah. 
Doctor. Doc- Doctor Sara. Yeah. That Sara doesn't care about these things. Like the last thing you'd see me with is like an expensive bag or like, I mean, yes, we do buy these things, mm. but I would not flash them around just to, to get approval, mm. to seek approval from others to, so they can say that I've made it. Mm. You know, I can borrow that stuff and still make you feel like I've made it, yeah, but yeah. it'll all be an illusion. Yeah. So when you are really, truly satisfied spiritually and you feel rich spiritually, you feel like you don't care what people think of you. Like, I don't care what, what you, like people would tell me, why aren't you driving such an expensive car? Why, why should I? Mm. Yeah, because you're successful, you wanna show it. I mean, that's what Instagram shows yeah, you yeah. what success is, but that's not what success is. To me, my definition of success is, what have I done for myself? And then what have I done for others? So service and serving others is a definition of success to me. Mm-hmm. And it's part of my, when I found out what my purpose is in life, my purpose is to serve. And when I tell people this, they laugh. Oh, no, no, my purpose is to be rich. My purpose is to be a billionaire. Pu- I'm, like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, no, I'm like amazing. But none of that goes to the grave because yeah. it's just borrowed. Yeah. What goes to the grave with you, it's, you know, that your good deeds, what you've left behind and memories with people, the love, the respect. This is how you become immortal. But mm. all of this, this is all borrowed. So I'm not going to kill myself, bend myself backward and, and front just to let people know I made it. I know I made it. It's more than enough. Mm. That's a pretty good answer. And look, I know I said this was going to be a fun interview, but I feel like I want to ask this now because... Go for it. I think it's so interesting. How old were you when you kind of realized your mortality? I mean, I think like everybody has this stage in life when they go oh shit i'm gonna die and this is real i love this topic right because i'm fascinated with that i think about it every single day in a positive way yeah yeah so and and i think the people who do think about it very regularly you find them they're the people that are switched on that want to do service that want to you know really live their life so how old were you so so i was once uh, giving a speech in uh, finland and there was like a lot of people and then this girl gets up and she's like, what motivates you? And everyone's like so excited to see what motivates her because I'm, I'm a person that's always hyper and happy. Like my whole house can be burning down mm. and you'd see me very chilled and calm because I can't do anything about yeah, it, exactly. you know? So they were expecting a like beautiful answer that will solve all their problems. And my answer was death. Death is my biggest motivation. Knowing that I can just get up right now and fall dead yeah. makes me want to become a better person every day makes me want to realize my dreams, makes me want to live a life that's authentic, not fake, not seeking validation, uh, makes me realize that all these things we have around us, all these luxuries and all that, I mean, it's beautiful, Mm -hmm. but it's not what life is about because why doesn't it go with me once I'm gone? I worked so hard for all this Mm. money and all this, then why doesn't it go with me to the grave? So I do think about death and I think at the age of 25, no, 24, I was scared. Because I, I was not, as a human being, I was yeah, yeah. not fulfilled with my full potential. Mm. I didn't know what my, my purpose was. I didn't know who the hell was I. So at that age, death was scary. But when I went on my self-discovery journey, death became such a beautiful thing. Mm. And now, like, the way I look at death has completely changed. And this is how I see it. Death is not life interrupted. It's life complete. So it's not like, oh, haram, this guy died. He's still young. No, his life was not interrupted. This is his purpose. He came Mm. here, he had a purpose, he had a reason, he's gone. So looking at death in a beautiful way, just like you look at living, like living life in a beautiful way, I think it's such a beautiful transition of your mindset. Mm. But I'll tell you what's also important to realize. Um, People need to, um, there is a disconnect between people spiritually and physically, which means that the body wants to do everything right now because it knows once it's gone it's gone there's no life after this the spirit is not worried because the spirit yeah yeah, the spirit is chilled it's like once this is over there's another story onto the next life onto the next you know adventure (coughs) so the spirit knows that and when your spirit and body are aligned and they are at peace together with that understanding so you you get the best of both worlds you enjoy life to a certain extent where you don't like lose yourself and and forget your morals and ethics and all that at the same time you know that after this life there is something way bigger yeah, than yeah. this but people don't don't know that they want to do everything here they will step on others they will lose their morals and ethics they will like you know literally destroy other people's lives because they want to live this life in the best way ever because the body has taken over the spirit yeah it's a disconnect and once you're connected you live in harmony you live in such a beautiful way i totally agree and i feel like 
people just overcomplicate life so much and it's it, it's really like it's not that serious Mm-mm. it's just not that serious and even stuff like i got my friends and They'll be sitting there in the UK and they'll be high. They'll call me up. They'll be like, you know, the Illuminati, do you know that this website's been selling kids and, and blah, blah, blah. And they'll start going into it. And I'll be like, bro, fair enough. Good on you. You did your research. What can you do about it? Like, you can't do anything about any of this stuff. Even if it was these secret societies that are doing all that stuff. And your little uh, Instagram <laughs> post is not changing anything. Like, I, I realize you're, you're coming from a good place. But when you have now turned into a guy that spends all of his days just researching all these things on YouTube in your house, like, what about your life, dude, that you're not living? Do you know what I mean? You're just wasting so much time doing things you can't change. No, I feel, look, I feel like we do have a responsibility to raise awareness. Yeah, raise awareness. But not to live in that. In in the end, you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. You raise awareness, you do what you have to do, you donate, you... You do what you, but then you have to for not forget that mm. you live too. So don't exist. You need to live. Mm. A lot of people I know exist, and it's so sad. And they're doing the same thing. Is they're on autopilot. They just literally hundred percent carry on all day. Hundred yeah. percent. So let's talk about this now. You put something on the internet the other day that I responded to. What is that? It? I was surprised that you even knew what it was. How do you <laughs> about, how do you how do you know about Supercal? <laughs> My God, how, who doesn't know Super Cow? I don't know. Cow I just and didn't, chicken. I just didn't think that it was here. It was such a fascinating cartoon because the parents had no upper body. Yeah, right. Like it's insane. Yeah. It was just a pair of legs. But you know, Super Cow, I was cutting. So this is the part of the show so where that I, I like to call "impress me," where you give me impressions of of things. So, okay. which impressions do you know? I like to balance it out. See, this is how I do my Got my kind it. of reporting. It's like Give me an impression, death. And then I put something else in there and it kind of balances I, 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 out. I've you know? seen you jumping around right? topics it between death out, to like right? super cow right I'm, now. I've got to balance it out. But. Um, no, my little buddy chicken. <laughs> of course, I know how to do cow. But I, I got you a gift. Okay. And this gift is the best impression I can make. Hold on. You actually got a gift? Yeah. So I've had this, March Simpson. Since mm. I was like 20, I think. No, 20, uh, 25, 26. Okay? So this is like a legacy that I'm giving to you. Really? I feel really touched. Yeah. So if she's a little... I w- try to wash her. I'm going to smell her first before I get I mean, yeah, she smells good. Let me just she do some adjustments, no, though. She's, she's <laughs> no, don't worry. I'll do the adjustments when I get there later. <laughs> no, but this is the best impression I can do. Okay. Let's go. So I'm handing this over to you, and you're going to take care of it from now on. That's actually a very good Marge. It is a very good Marge. Okay, Marge is going to now be a part of the <laughs> studio set. <laughs> Wait, since we're doing gifts, yeah. I noticed something else that we have in common. I know, no, it's no, we're crazy. Not talking about that. Something else. You think I would have let you know the real gifts, just what? as easy as that. So you're a big fan of fedoras. Yes. And I'm a very big fan of fedoras. Yes. And a friend of mine custom makes fedoras. Really? Yes. So I told him you were coming. And I told him to custom make you a fedora. No, you're yeah. joking. No, 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 of course. <gasps> So this is your custom oh made by Riley. <laughs> you have to check them out on Instagram. They are amazing. And he's actually a very good friend of mine. Um, so he looked at your profile, saw the colors that you kind of like. And then... I love right. this. Oh my God. I love this too. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's one of them. I left my other one at home. Oh yeah, so he custom makes them and he's like really good man and i know that you like your fedora this so is my favorite right? mine are very plain yeah but this is the thing so i'm bringing you into a new world remember i told you a lot of secret societies i'm bringing you into now okay i'm wearing a head yeah, yeah it's I'm not gonna work with the headphones, no, the headphones. But it looks dope mm, i love after. this what is it called uh by Ralu. and the good by thing Ralu. about their fedoras is you can change the size from the inside which i think is really cool game changer yeah definitely. right <coughs> i love this because i wore one and Thank i remember you. it just rested on my nose and i was just like that's not how it's supposed to be thank you so much i love it it's okay homie <laughs> no you cannot do that okay by the way you know what i did yeah. once so i did a research about how much march simpson gets paid the voice person the voice person so okay. she does a lot of voices bart yeah, yeah. and yeah, others yeah. right so i heard that it was between two hundred and fifty thousand to three hundred thousand an episode an episode dollars yeah so uh, when I was in the U.S., I was Let's living there her. for a while. <laughs> and then you can do the voices and we split <laughs> well, listen, it. Listen to this. So I called Fox, new, like I called Fox the network. And I was like, hello, Fox. 
and the girl's like yeah and you know like with yeah, like yeah. the valley accent yeah, yeah. right and i was like i just wanted to let you know that i'm gonna be late for work she's like who are you and she probably never watched simpsons in her no, life she did right? she, oh, she knows did. Yeah. yeah and she's like who is this it's not funny and i was like i'm serious and then like we got into a conversation i was still in my march you know the like way through, yeah. all the way through and then i was like what's your name and she's like my name is laura and i was like and she's going on with it she's, she's going on with it yeah we're having fun in the morning yeah. and i think she was bored at 9 a.m in the office so i was like i heard that you pay march simpson 250 and she's like yeah we do something like that between that and i was like i'll take 50. i was like i'll take fifty thousand. we're playing sir <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's more than fifty because there's two of us now, right? So you have to think I of, of both I mean, of us. I mean, look, I, look I, you have I, two I families to support here, all right? It's not just the one I anymore. Take, I take ten at that you point. You signed the contract. <laughs> that, wa that wasn't an NDA. That was a you now support both families, yeah. right? So we will. Uh, we'll yeah, get but, there but then America. it ended by her thinking that I was the real March Simpson trying to prank the her. Voice. She's like, I know it's you, funny, haha. By two, two, two. I was like, you know. That's a very good question. Let me so, see yeah. how we can how I can apply that to real life. Yeah, let's do I that. I might do children's parties or something. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how we can go. <laughs> let's talk relationships. Wow, you jumped from death Straight. To, to March Simpson. Straight. I like to keep people and on the spot. Talk about <laughs> I, I talk about I want to talk about it's like let's go. You know, jump from one let's to go. one. Ha, tell me what a relationship is. What a what a relationship is. <laughs> okay. If you were to ask me, do you know how to love? I will tell you 100% because I know what compromise, love, friendship, communication, s trust, uh, like giving. I know all of this because I've done it so many times. And when I'm in love, I give 150%. Which and, is and the march. Huh? And the march though. Yeah, that's a lot of love, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No worries. Me giving I'm not, away I'm not taking Simpson, it lightly. My son is not going to believe I did that. I'm not taking it lightly. Yeah. So basically, um, if you ask me, do you know how it feels to love somebody? I'll tell you 100%. I know exactly how to love, and I give 100, 150%. Not even 100, 150%. I give too much. If you were to ask me, do you know how it feels like to be loved? I'll tell you no. Aww, no, I'm serious. Don't say that. I, no, no, I'm serious. I've, I, the only love I've had was love from children, my, my son, my family, my friends. But from like a si significant other, I've, I don't know how it feels like to be loved. Is uh, that, I'm honest. Is that like <coughs> even in the beginning of those relationships? Even. I, was, uh, I know how it feels like to be used. I know how it feels like to be cheated on, lied to. I know, I know how it feels like to be hurt in a relationship. But do I know how it feels like to be genuinely loved by a man? No, not at all. I don't know how it feels like. So I've never experienced that. Wow. Not at all. Not even once. I've been married I twice. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> Shining, Shining shimmering splendid. splendid. Hey, we have a carpet here. We need the carpet quickly. Yalla! <laughs> She's missed out 33 years. <laughs> no, so yeah, yeah I, I, I've, I've been so unlucky with this. So you've this. been married twice and both times you didn't feel love. No, not at all. Used, um, very wrong. Uh, my second marriage was the worst, but um, yeah, used, uh, abused, um, but never felt loved. Always felt like I was needed because I had something to give and provide. Mm. Yeah, financially, blah blah, and all that. So I know I know exactly how it feels like to be used. So why do you then get in? I mean, this is just a question out my head. Why do you get married to someone if at that stage you feel like you still haven't felt love? Because. I've all my life I've been with narcissistic men narcissistic mm -hmm. men so if you know about narcissism is that they when they first meet you they do the love bombing phase yeah, yeah, love bombing. where where they they talk to you and understand exactly what you want in a man and they yeah. listen to you and then they become that man magically yeah. <laughs> it's like everything you ever wanted in a man is right there in front of you and then when they make sure by testing your patience and your mm. like boundaries they ask you what's your boundaries and after a certain time, they test your boundaries, so they push. And if they feel mm. like you're lenient and you don't walk away and you're understanding and forgiving and you're an empath, then the mask starts slipping and they start showing you their true colors. Then the devalu devaluation happens, then the discarding happens, then the cycle repeats. They show you you're important, they take you up high, they drop you down low and then they leave you mm. and they search for something else. And once they can't find what you give them, they come back to you. They, it's just a repeating cycle. And it's, it's um, not only tiring mentally and physically, it's also tiring because 
it's scary. Like I've done a full course about narcissism for three mm. months with like the top expert in the world. So I can understand because I was fooled over and over again. And now, now I can sniff a narcissist. You can spot it from the beginning. Oh, hell yeah. I can yeah. sniff them. It's easy. And um, what I learned is something that blew my mind. And that's how I, go, I got over my broken heart so easily. Narcissists, when they target you, they first love bomb you and take you to a certain high to release a lot of dopamine in mm -hmm. your body that you've never experienced in your life. You reach a high. Yeah. And then when they make sure you reach the high, they drop you so low, they release cortisol in your body, which is a stress hormone. Mm, makes you want the high again. And makes you want the high again. So, And the only person that can take you to the high is them. So you, you feel like, why can't I walk away from them? Honey, it's because hormonally you're imbalanced and you think you're addicted, but you're not. Mm -hmm. They've just mixed you up so badly intentionally and now they're playing around with you. So when I learned that, how malice and how malicious they are, I was like, my God, it was so easy to get over them. Mm. So easy. Have you, had you feel like it scarred you in any way that you're now very kind of cautious when it comes to these mm. things? Uh, no, I, I believe in the language of love. I love love. I believe in human beings. I believe in love and kindness and trust. So I would not let two broken relationships make me... Um, disbelieve or have a disbelief in the nine billion people living yeah. in the world no like uh, it will take much more than two yeah. men to do that but um for you know they say when something goes wrong do not change the house change the locks to the door so basically uh, a hurt person will build a wall mm -hmm. now a wall will stop pain from getting in but also stop good things from coming in a healed person builds a door because a door opens and closes opens, so yeah. lets good things in and bad things out so mm. I've healed completely. This has not scarred me. I still believe in love and I'm excited about it. And I'm, I can't wait to meet my other half. I believe, you know, each one of us has, mm. you know, their other half wandering around in this world, anywhere in this I world. Think there's, I think there's a lot more than one. I believe that people have loads of other halves uh. and sometimes they meet them at the right time that that's the time for them to be their other half. But I, I, I'm just not a, a fan of this. There's one person in the world who's perfect for you. I relationships aren't like that. Life isn't no, like that. It's all about building things together and learning about other people and learning how to how to uh, compromise and all of that stuff. So I feel like there's loads of people that could be your other half. Yeah. But it's whether you... No, so basically what I meant is not like there's one guy mm. that got made But a lot of people think that. A no, lot no, of no. people think that. And what one soulmate. It's like, like no, there's no, a lot no. of soulmates. Would I say the one... It's that one person that's going to be patient, understand me, be mm. open to listening to me, understand my traumas, I understand his traumas, it make me a better person, make him a better person. There is, like, that, that person is a one. He's a one person. So, I, but no, I don't believe in soulmates and other halves and all that. I believe you meet somebody um, and then you guys become each other's mm. halves. Like, you work hard to make it happen. Love is not easy. Mm. Love is like bread. You have to bake it fresh every morning. You know, you yeah. don't eat it the next day leftover. It, it, it needs to be fresh every morning. It's hard work, just like a business, just like, you know, a job. Every day you have to come with the same energy, do the research, you know, invest a lot in. Love is the same thing. It's not just finding somebody and saying, you know, I got it. You know, mm. we're married now. You know, let's say we got yeah, kids, yeah. it's over. It, no, it's hard work. And not a lot of people are ready to put in the hard work. Do you feel like men are intimidated by you? A lot. Really? A lot. Tell me why. Uh, you know, it's funny. A lot of, when I meet a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, you're so smart. You're so pretty, blah, blah. You must have a lot of men like asking you out every day. They're like probably laying down like a carpet in front of you. And I'm like, what? No, I rarely get approached. Mm. And I think the reason is because um, a lot of men are intimidated by strong women. I am an independent woman, but when it comes to a relationship, I'm not, I don't wear the pants. Mm. No, that's like, I'm not the man in the relationship. Like there are roles that has to be taken and played the right way. A man has to feel like he's a man. He has to be the provider. He has to be that. But before me having a man, of course I'm strong, I'm independent. Mm. But when I'm in a relationship, I want to depend on a man and I want a man, a man to depend on me. I want to go home. Uh, find someone I can open up to, relax with, grow a family with, grow up with. I, I, and I don't say it uh, lightly. I don't say I want a man. I mm. say I need a man. Mm. Because I don't feel we should deny and, and belittle an instinct that we're born with. Yeah. We should, I hear a lot of women saying, I don't need a man, I want him. No, yeah, honey, yeah. no, it's honey. Like, yeah, right, no, no, I'm yeah. sorry, he's not a bag, he's yeah, not a yeah. car. You need a man. Yeah, yeah. Just like a man needs a woman. Yeah. So I will not sit here and act like I'm all tough and I don't need, no, I need a man. And I do function so well on my own. 
But with the right person by my side, with love inspiring me, I can function 150% better. And I won't deny that. And I don't have ego when mm. I talk about that. No, not at all. And coming from your previous relationships, because uh, you know, at the end of the day, you were supporting uh, mainly. Is that something providing. that you're providing? <laughs> well, that's, and supporting. that's supporting, providing. So, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was tricked into providing. Yeah. Do you feel like that's put you off meeting a man that isn't really wealthy or... Do you know what I mean? Does a man have to be no. really wealthy for you to be, or are you happy with a guy who's uh, look, doing his thing? The thing but is, not the thing is, I don't like. I, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you, and I'm not ashamed of that. I don't need a man to be like a billionaire or a mm. millionaire for me to fall in love with a man or to start a family with him. I don't care about these things because I believe if we both have the right approach and right energy, we can both become rich together. Mm. You know, we can complete each other in different ways and. And we can build an empire together. I believe a couple should like build a legacy together and not to have their work separated and, oh, she knows nothing about him, he knows nothing about her. I don't believe in that, mm. but that's me. Um, however, um, I know that it's not fair for me to also meet a man that has, let's say, is not capable mm. to like take care of a family and then he comes into a relationship and I'm capable and he feels less of a man. You know, it's, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't feel I don't feel like it's a good feeling for a man to be in, but I'll definitely say that I don't mind as long as a man is able, even if he has a, a normal salary, mm. but he's able to provide and to support and I'll do the same with him. If he's able, then he's good. He's more than capable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't mind if he had nothing, but then it will be challenging for him. He will feel out of place, you know, and it's not fair for the man. Yeah, makes sense. How did you get into tech? That's that's something that really interested me, and you know the world of NFTs now yeah. and all of that stuff. And uh, just by the way, if you check your WhatsApp, I sent you my wallet for my NFT. So You've sent me so many that. things. I have, right? Yeah, I'm kind of worried kinda, about kinda this. Kind of give her, <laughs> call me a giver, you know? <laughs> yeah. But just my crypto wallet is there in case you just feel like throwing an NFT somewhere. In my way, yeah. I might send. I might send. You, I might send you one you like. Yours are actually really cool. Because I'm, I'm big into NFTs. Are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. And Did when I saw your ones, I was just like, oh, they actually look cool. Do you know the story? No, this is why I... So basically, the, uh, yeah, so basically these, these are a bunch of bad people stuck okay. in the metaverse and they're destroying and causing chaos and stealing and all that. And we made a deal with them, with these guys. And we're like, listen, what would it take to make you good? Like, you know, bad guy gone good. The road to redemption. Like, what can we do to have a deal so you can be better people? Yeah. So they, these characters agreed that if we free them from the metaverse and bring them to the real world, they will do good for us. Okay. So basically, once you purchase the NFT, you free this person from the metaverse and you bring him to the real world. world. And now proceeds from the buying goes to Smile Train, which is an organization that does, um, uh, does surgeries for children with cleft palates. Amazing. So basically, you are giving a child an opportunity to live and not die. Yeah. So this is the first promise that these characters give you, that if you buy me and release me to the real world, I will do good. This is the first thing. Second thing they do for you is that um, when you purchase an NFT, you own the copyright. So whatever we do with these NFTs in the future, you whether end, yeah. yeah, whether it's like a series or, or merch, there's a, a, a pool equity for all the NFT holders to make money with us as we go. So basically, you're freeing them and they're going to make you money and mm. then change the world. But the only way to do it is to free them. And the only way to free them is to purchase them. So this is like the story behind them. How many did you mint? No, we didn't start the minting yet. Oh, you haven't no, minted them yet? No, no, no. We're yet. doing the whitelist competitions at the moment. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you already minted them. No, no, not yet. Not okay, yet. Okay, when We're are you planning on minting them? And what's the collection's name? Um, it's called Alcatraz. You know, explain that Alcatraz is the jail, I know. Al Alcatraz is the jail, but this is like Alcatraz, so it can remind us of the metaphor, like metaphorically yeah. remind us of the jail, because these guys are jailed in the yeah, metaverse, yeah, yeah. and they want to be free. So it's called Akatras and yeah, we like it's it's the, the characters are funny. They look like you know they look a bit suspicious. They're very cool looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they look like they've been in jail for a yeah. while. But yeah, I mean, we we haven't uh, even announced the mint date yet because we're just doing whitelist competitions and you know we're you know preparing the Discord and all that. So this is the phase we're at right now. It's a big process, man. Just it is. Getting it's that Discord and, and getting the you know the right people to 
it's to kind of not push easy. it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's you not know, easy. you know, ch- I, I'm glad you you tapped that topic, which is pushing. Hmm. Um, I am a marketeer, so I come from a marketing background. I have an agency that does that, and I went into this with my partner saying, "I've got you guys. Yeah, yeah. I've got your back. I know how to do this. I've done this with everything, and it worked." And then when you look at NFTs, you're like, God damn it. Like it's a whole new world. Again, it's yeah, not, yeah. Whatever I do is not working. And yeah. it's like a complete ball game. And now I'm learning how to like market NFTs. And it, it's like we launched the website and the, the social pages and the, like with the whitelist competitions. But at the same time, we are learning how to market this. Like yeah, it's, it's basically building your Instagram again from scratch. Exactly. It's crazy. Like, you know how long it took you? And then, I mean, look, utilities are always, yeah. always a seller. Now... The difficult thing with yours is you're reaching out to people's hearts as their utility. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where it's a lot easier to say, hey, look, this NFT is going to get you into this concert, into this, into this, into that. So people are going to be like, oh, all right, I want to be part of that kind of thing. But I mean, what, that, but what that's will happen done. Is that's overdone. It's done. But what will happen is the good thing is you'll have the right people. Exactly. And that's the kind of people who you want, you want to be involved. Exactly. And that's the kind of people that will, again, reinvest in the community. Yeah. Also, which is good. How many pieces are you putting out? Uh, seven thousand. Why did you choose that? I'm always interested in why people choose ten and seven and. Um, because we we made a promise to the organization that we want to give an opportunity for six hundred kids to stay alive, and the way to do that is by doing seven thousand NFTs. So just to juggle between the business cost and and like the donations that we're doing. So imagine, once these seven thousand are sold six more than 600 almost 700 kids will stay alive Mm. because of the people who purchased the nfts so it's two things number one teaching people how to give back to the community because that that's part of my 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 personality and who Mm. i am uh and my my basically purpose in life and then the other part is teaching people about investment and teaching them how to create wealth not become rich because when you buy an nft and you resell it you become rich yeah okay but when you buy an NFT and you are like invested in a company and that company gives back to you, right now your money is working for you, so we're creating wealth for you. We're yeah. not making you rich. And there's a huge difference between creating wealth and being rich. Mm-hmm. So some people work for money, some people their money work for them. And this is the shift in the mindset we're trying to create. And of course, definitely, I won't deny there's other utilities that will come out in the future that'll be fun. But I feel like most of the utilities have been done and overdone and overused and abused. And we're like, you know, we just want to make a difference in people's lives, impact them differently, and in the world. Hmm. Yeah. And do you, are you, do you, is that your only NFT kind of like entry? Or do you, are you part of the NFT world? Are you a fan of nfts and collecting and crypto and all of that stuff no i'm i'm not i'm 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 definitely a tech entrepreneur but i've never like the web3 like you didn't get into crypto at all uh i i did in the beginning but i i like made some money out of it but then it was risky watching things go up and down and i was like it's very risky especially lately dude yeah i know a bunch of people who raised money for their company through bitcoin and now that it dropped imagine all the money they raised It's it's gone so now they have to raise again. It, it's insane. So to me, it was a bit of a scary road, but I feel like the first people that embarked on that, uh, like mm. jumped the wagon from the beginning, are the ones that benefited the most. Dude, I had a guest on here, a friend of mine. He made 100 million off Bitcoin. That's amazing. But it was the right time. Yeah, 2013. Yeah. He just put $10,000 in it. Yeah. Can you imagine 100 yeah. million just the take right, taking just it. the right time. And on the other side, there's that guy who bought three pizzas from Domino's with Bitcoin and that money would have been worth something like 20 million right now. Really? Yeah, so he ordered three Domino's pizzas and they accepted him to pay in Bitcoin. This was right in the beginning when Bitcoin was nothing. Oh my God. If he had held that till today, it would have been worth over 20 million. That's crazy. Imagine, right? My goodness. I'm Look, I'm not really pissed about it because I didn't know about it at the time. Yeah. I feel worse for the people that knew about it and decided not to just eh, put a bit of money exactly, in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get. So what where you mean. I wasn't, I, I had no idea. I don't feel as bad. Yeah. Kind of thing. It's it's like uh, exactly. I got introduced to it recently. No, not not recently. A couple of years ago. It's like, yeah. Well, when it started, I didn't know much about it, so I feel mm. like there's no FOMO and like I f- mm. I don't feel like I missed out on anything, but I do understand. Like I've met people who lost their wallets. I know a guy who had fifty million dollars, completely gone. His wallet was taken. Like it's crazy, right? Especially if that's your main income. Exactly. Where you have yeah. your family's kind of future exactly. put in there, kind of exactly. thing. So you got to be careful with that. Like, only ever invest ten percent of of your uh, 
Ex- no, if you you're total, you know. If anything, you know. Hundred percent, yeah. Uh, wait, invest hundred percent. No, I said. 100%, I was about to say 100%. bad advice. Bad advice. Hundred percent to the ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your love language. Yeah. Or love languages. Okay, mine. Yeah, I'm interested to know. I think uh, my love language is affection, like touch. Yeah. Um, it's time. And wh- hold on, what's what are the other three? Physical touch, uh, words of words of affirmation. Affirmation. Um, why am I forgetting this now? Gifts, uh, gifting. Gifts, yeah. No, so I not gifting is not a big deal for me. Um, I mean, a flower every now and then yeah, is yeah, nice, yeah. but it, it it doesn't. I know people who, if they're not gifted every single yeah, week, yeah, yeah. they feel like they're not loved. But no, I feel like physical touch, you know, uh, affection is, is like important. Mm-hmm. Words of affirmation. Every person needs affirmation. I think affi- yeah. words of affirmation is so important. Yeah, um, it's underestimated. And especially for children. Now, yeah. being a mum, how are you navigating it all? Being a business mum. I, oh my God, this topic, work-life balance. Mm. Okay, so I don't believe in work, work-life balance. I think it's a beautiful myth. And whoever mm. says they've achieved it, you know, amazing, good for you. But I've been pressured by so many moms telling me, do you take your son to play soccer? And mm. I'm like, no. They're like, oh, my God, you're a bad mom. Do you take your son to swimming classes? I was like, no. They're like, oh, you're such a bad mom. Mm. So it's like, who wrote the book about, you know, how to be a good mom? Do you spend 50% of your time with your child? No, I'm, 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 I'm the provider. I'm, <laughs> I'm providing empires here. I'm <laughs> building empires. I'm putting yeah. food on the table. I pay yeah. for everything. Uh, no one helps me in raising my child ever since he was born. I'm the sole financial provider for the kid. So they don't understand that sometimes I have to travel. Sometimes I have to work late hours. But I'm showing my kid that his mother is doing whatever she can yeah. to make it all possible for his dreams to come true. And I'm showing him that a woman can do it without a man. So I don't accept these women to understand uh, because they, they chose different paths in life, which is beautiful. I don't judge anybody up to them, right? But I get judged a lot about it. And I, I realized, you know, create your own balance, whether it's 10% with family, 80% with work, 20 with family, mm-hmm. 30, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you feel good, that is your balance. Own it. Don't be ashamed yeah. of it. Don't let people put you to shame or make you feel small about it. Because th- this mommy shaming thing, it happens a lot. It does happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel like we have to talk about the show because we're not allowed to talk about the show. I cannot say so anything that's about why the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I'm going to talk about the show. Yeah. I mean, we're at, we're at that segment now where we can do that. Um, let's talk about hate and what's the word I'm looking for? Because Your judgment. Yeah, because recently th- there's been yeah there's Attack. been a, a couple of <laughs> yeah there's been some backlash. There's been some attacks on on social media saying Bullying, hey, yeah. 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 How, let's talk about that. I want you to get into it, and I know we can talk about that because you've already posted it. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk. Go. What do you want me to say? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> this no, is okay, how, so this how, how you tricks me into yeah, it. Yeah. Right. So how do you feel about the whole kind of like you know there was a, there was a video going around circulating about this is not the housewives of Dubai blah 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 blah. What was your initial opinion? Did you first see that or was it sent to you? No, I was tagged. No, oh, no, no, tagged? no, no. I woke up in the morning attacked by the, the community and attacked by so many locals and Arabs and all that and everything. And I was like, well, hold on, what's mm. going on? And then I saw the video and I watched the whole video and I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Like, mm. this is not a documentary. Yeah. And, and basically, he was going on and on and on about the name. But this is a franchise name of 15 years. We cannot change the name. Yeah. The name does not mean that we represent um, the real housewives of a certain country. It's just a group of women who are like individuals in their own lives, in their own like uh, zone, representing themselves full stop. I don't represent the Emirati woman. Mm. I don't represent the UAE. I'm an Emirati. I, 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 we can, it's undeniable. I cannot you know, be from Mars or mm. like fake a country just for the sake of the show. I am an Emirati and I'm proud of it. And I'm proud to be on a show um, representing myself the way I would want to represent myself to the world to inspire other women. Uh, in the sense of business or, or like in the sense of how to, you know, spread love between friendships and to be, you know, a person who is always positive and all that. So I, my, my main purpose was A, to inspire. Yeah. Number two was to set an example, not represent, mm. set an example um, 
to the Western world and the rest of the world about how Arab women are because they have this idea about Arab women in the Arab world that we're submissive, mm-hmm. we're controlled, we cannot live our dreams, we are um, at home doing nothing, we cannot do work, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot. So I, I'm happy to be that example to show them, you know, eh, you're wrong, you mm-hmm. know, but I'm not representing. There's a difference between example and representation. I'm not representing. I cannot. You know how many types of women exist in the UAE? Yeah. Just forget forget the expats, just the Emirati community. You know how many types of women exist? How can I represent all of them? Never. I cannot. I represent Sarah Al-Madani and that's it. Yeah. Doctor. Sarah Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. Okay, but the, the, the thing that gets me is, I mean, I'm sure six months ago to a year ago, they, they announced this. It wasn't like something new that was that just came out of nowhere. People knew about the show and people knew it was coming, right? So... Yeah, where was the surprise there? Uh, people knew it was coming, but I think that. You think it was the clip, the trailer? Uh, I, I look. The, the thing is, you need to understand something. The tra- the the trailer is. It's made to make people want to watch it. It's made to make people want to watch yeah, yeah. it, and it's as worse as it gets, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, people just did not respond good to the trailer. They were upset. They misunderstood. Um, they started like um, doing like campaigns about choosing real women who are housewives in the UAE that represent the real housewives in the UAE. It's like, okay, what is a real housewife? Because one might be covered, one might be not. Mm. One might have kids, one might not. One might be divorced, one might not. One might have a job, one might be a housewife, just a home, a mom. So who represents who and what? There is no representation here whatsoever. There's no ground, no base to represent anyone. I'm just here to be me. That's mm-hmm. it. And to have fun and to enjoy. And it's it's a good opportunity for me from this part of the world to expand my business, to expand my, my vision through the show. In Your brand, uh, essentially. As a, yeah, as a brand. And I don't think there is anything wrong with that. And do you feel like it's going to die down or do you feel like it's going to get worse when the show is? I don't know. Because the thing is, um, people were like, it's like w- I'm being attacked on a daily basis. I'm not joking. Really? A daily basis. Messages. But you're also getting a lot of good people who people who no, are of promoting course. it. No, no, of course, definitely. I have I have best of both worlds. Yeah. But I'm upset because you haven't even seen me on the show. Like you haven't seen how I act. You haven't seen what I do. Mm. I could have been praying from episode one to like the last episode. Like you that know. was the one time you put your thing down. It's like no, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like I, like I could have been doing that. How would you know the show hasn't aired? So it's like just judgment, which mm. is not fair. And, you know, I hope once they see the show, they'll enjoy it and they'll they realize that, you know, whatever they've done was not. But I feel like not, anyone not who fair. watches that show who was in that kind of hating or in that position of, of they are now, I don't think the show was made for them. So even when they do see it, they're still not going to understand it and they're not going to get the whole thing. No, it's made, for it, it's, right? it's made for like it's an acquired taste yeah. for like a niche like audience. Like the Desperate Housewives shows that came and, and, yeah, and all the other ones. Exactly. It's for a niche audience that mm. loves this kind of entertainment and, and likes the drama and likes everything like that. It's not made for everyone, which is OK. Um, I mean, we see all the Khaliji movies that come out in Ramadan and all that. Mm. Like it's not everybody's taste as well. And it's, re- it's a representation and it, like it's entertainment, you know, I, I love this quote that I've read on Instagram. I've seen something today. I left it the way it is. I said nothing and I moved on with my life. Just because you don't like something, you don't yeah. have to take it personally and attack it. And, and to me, like m- as a human being, I feel like it's so weird for a stranger to come on my page under my picture, publicly insult me. Totally understand. Like, 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 yeah. like, like how I would never do that. Like, yeah. as a human being, I would never do that. It doesn't make sense for me. But I, some people feel entitled. I mean, I wish everyone, like, you know, healing and love and positivity. And It's very strange. Me and Chris were talking about that literally yeah. today. It's a very strange... Never once have I wanted to go online and write something on someone's page about them. Never. That's negative. Uh, I just... I, d- I really don't understand the mind behind it, the mechanics behind it. And, you know, you've got the Gary V's and all these people who say, you know, these people are hurt, these people are depressed, these people have their own issues and blah, 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 and they're just trying to find anything. But it's like, hey, I've been depressed before, but I never thought I would want to, g- at that time, that I want to go and start doing something to someone else. We, you know? we, we've all had traumas. We've all yeah. been through ups and downs. We've all been hurt. I, I, not, not Even at my lowest point in my life, like when I was like, uh, I was bankrupt in 2013, a business went wrong Mm. my business partner took all the money lawsuits blah 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 for five years and thank god like that was over so even at that moment where i was angry because like my business Mm. partner for doing this to me 
I never was like, you know what? I'm going to go on each one's account and insult people and, mm. and even show some. No, people were sitting next to me. I swear to God, they found out two years later I was going through something like that. Some of them found out five years later after my cases were over. And they were like, dude, we were out with you every day. We never even felt anything. It's because mm. I'm not going to shower you with my negativity or yeah. what I'm going through just because I'm going through it. And I don't, I, li like, wallahi, I sit down and I go like, okay, let me pick up the phone. Let me write something negative under someone's post. Mm. I can't. It, it doesn't make even sense Even from a me. fake account, I yeah. can't. Like I, can't, I can't even have a fake account, let alone. Exactly. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you something. This is when, when integrity comes into place because mm. integrity is doing the right thing even if people are watching you or not. Even, I swear, once me and my friend were sitting with a fake account. I'm like, let's write something under our friend's account. I swear to God, like me, within myself, I, sh I felt ashamed. I could not face me. Yeah, yeah. Let alone, I don't care what people think about me. I care about what I think of me after doing something like that. I judge me. You know, I've, I'll be ashamed to face me. So it's all about integrity and, yeah, and how you see things. It's very strange. I, I think they're a whole different. I don't get it. The whole different type of person. It just doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. Do you feel like? Are you happy that you did the show? Oh, I'm very happy. Yeah. Very happy. I'm very proud. Have you seen it all already? Or no, no, no. You haven't seen any of it. You don't get to see it. We look, the show is not scripted. Um, literally, cameras rolling and your life is on, on the go. They don't set, mm, set up scenarios not and say. at all. I thought that. Because I've been watching that bling, you know, that, that one yeah, on Netflix, yeah. the, the Asian one. No, I, which I, I love, by the way. I, I haven't watched it. You haven't watched Bling? Bling Empire? Yeah. No, I haven't watched oh, you got to watch that. So, no, the thing is, I thought my whole life growing up, I thought, you know, reality TV is scripted. I know some are. Yeah. But when I was there, I was like, uh -huh, and the cameras were there like, okay. I'm like, what? They're yeah. like, life? Move? So none of it. There, there wasn't any. No. It didn't set up any kind of arguments. No, or nothing. Everything was natural. Everything was real. Wow. And the first couple of like the first two days was hard because there's cameras and you're like, how am I supposed to act normal? Yeah, yeah. But then you get used to it and then you act like yourself and whatever happens happens. Whatever doesn't happen doesn't happen. You know, it's just like. But obviously they say we're going to be in whoever's house today. Yeah, no, no. So we thing. plan, like I plan the gatherings. Like I have a gathering in my house, you know, everybody oh, come over. Okay. Yeah, or she's having a gathering, let's do this. Or I'm going out with my son. It's planned, it's like my daily life. And there's cameras, that's it. Wow, Yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah, so who, whatever you see there, the personalities, the attitude, it's the person representing themselves 100%. Really? Yeah. You, do you feel like everybody was how they were? I don't know. I, I've, I don't know, and I'm not. I'm not gonna even talk about that. But <laughs> <laughs> it was so close. <laughs> I was so close. You're not, you're not gonna trick yeah, me yeah, into yeah. this. I was so close. But you cannot yeah. do that. <laughs> okay. No, but um, no. I, I mean, like, whatever you see is mm. that person representing themselves. Yeah. So they chose how they want to be seen, how they want to act. Everything was chosen by them. It was not preset to them. Here's an interesting one. How do you think your son feels about you being on it? I had a, like me and my son have conversations yeah. that like I would have with a 36 year old son of mine. Like I talked to my kid ever since he was two as if he's mm. an adult, yeah, yeah. my ups and downs, my feelings. So I went up to him like, I'm doing a reality TV show. He's like, okay, what is reality TV? And he, he he's a 60 year old man in a mm. six year old body. So he's like, what is reality TV? I'm like, they just film our life. He's like, how was that fun? I was like, you know, you know, people, you know, see our life, how a mom can run seven companies and do this and do, be a public speaker and then take care of you and all that. <coughs> and I think um, people might be interested in that. He's like, okay. He's like, can I be on the show? I'm like, yeah, but you have to sign a contract. You cannot back off the show. He's mm. like, okay, let's do that. So I took his approval, his consent. He was happy with it. Uh, um, he did it. But I remember once we were filming and he went up to the producer. And he's like, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and everyone's like, you can't quit. You yeah, signed yeah. a contract. And we were he, did, he did not sign a contract, but yeah. we were joking. He's like, I don't care. You can tear that contract <laughs> up. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> what was happening in that scene? huh? <laughs> I, was, I was trying to make him eat with his hands because I'm trying to pass the culture oh, okay. to my kid yeah, yeah. as an Emirati. I'm like, Baba, Habibi, you know, you, yeah. be, like, you have to eat with your hands. Mandi? Well, uh, it was Machboos. Okay, and right. he, was, he was like, I can't do it. And, he, yeah. and he's like, I quit. I don't want to do this. I was like, oh, Did they so. catch that? That would have been a really good... I think so. It was caught. It was, he's very dramatic sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. my son. Yeah. So do you, do you worry about your son growing up in Dubai? Because I get this a lot, where a lot of people are like, oh, they're growing up in a... Especially from <laughs> my English friends and stuff. They're growing up in a bubble. When they come to the real world, it's all different and blah, blah, blah. No, my son. No, ho, ho, ho. my son is not spoiled. 
Yeah. My son works for his money. He has chores. He makes money every week, and he gets to decide what he wants to do with the money. Um, I no, do but I don't mean it in that sense. What do you mean, like safety I mean it, and all yeah, that? Yeah, no, I mean no. it in a sense where in London somebody would just punch you in the face just because they don't like your shoes. No, I, 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 do you know what I mean? I it's make r- I real. No, I make my son watch. I, I obviously these things don't happen in Dubai, yeah. so I make my son watch documentaries. I speak about you know a lot of things about mm. fights, about even drugs. I speak about everything with him as if he's a grown up. Even relationships, divorce, falling in love. You know mm. how things work. I'm very honest with him. Plus, I when I do like a lot of. Um, community work and for example with like um, homeless people and like you know orphans and all that I, my kid sees it mm. and I tell him look you have everything and these kids have nothing so from now on you're not gonna buy any more gifts because you're taking it for granted you're not buying any more things yeah. because you have a lot let's give away what you have so That's I, what I do uh, yeah if you get something new you have to give something give away something to another away. child yeah. exactly so you have just because they're not exposed because that's how Dubai is yeah. you expose them in your own way I think so that's really yeah. important because I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Exactly. They don't talk to them. They don't tell them about yeah. the real world. And then they get there and it's clubs, party, drugs, fight. You know what I exactly. mean? And they're just like, I'm going to do it all. No, you got to be you open with I mean? your kids. And also another thing I've decided to do, probably I'm going to do this in um, August, end of August. From end of August till October, I'm going to move to Bali nice. for like two, three months. A lot of my business partners they are there. A lot of my investors are there. And I'm just going to go to disconnect from the world. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my son in a school there that's in a tree house. Nice. And I want my son to connect with nature, yeah. with people who have you know, simple lives. And I, I, wa- I want him to get that taste of life because you cannot get that here. So important. Yeah. yeah. So and I, we decided to just live on the beach you know, with our laptops, work, and disconnect from everything. It's so good because yeah. I remember because I go to Zanzibar a lot. And I remember just coming around the corner because I like to stay near the villages yeah. where all the kids are around and stuff and I remember just seeing the kids and they had a tire an empty tire from a car Okay. and they were just rolling it and running that's so cute and it reminded me of when I was young you know because yeah. we well I definitely grew up without phones without internet without any of that stuff so we played do you know what I mean and it just reminded me of the the old days and how simple fun actually can be and they played with that tire by the way for about eight hours yeah do you know what i mean yeah yeah. a bunch of six of them and it just made me think are we making it worse or do you know what i mean like are we allowing it Mm -hmm. by giving them ipads and all that stuff i look the thing is we cannot look our generation was different their Mm. generation our kids our generation is different we cannot let our fear just because we grew up in a different atmosphere and environment to affect our children's uh, environment because that's not mm, life is not same, how yeah. it was before yeah. and they, they are the ipad generation you know let them enjoy it maybe their kids will be something else's generation yeah. we cannot let our fear of you know just because you know things were not the way we were to to make us like okay no ipads no doing this no mm. no 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 playing playstation but that that's how the world is right now you know, mm. you cannot. Uh, I, I, I remember my friend was telling me his kid was so into PlayStation that when he applied for a job in, I think was it like a petroleum field in the water, um, when he applied for a job, his job like interview was him playing a PlayStation game, fixing an oil field under wow. w- underwater. So he's like, I'm so glad I never stopped my kid from playing because yeah. his interview was a PlayStation game and he had to fix uh, uh, an oil field un- underwater, like engineer it underwater. So it's a different world. And we, I know it's scary for us because mm. we come from like a generation where we had no phones. The best generation. The, the best. I mean, it was, right? We, best, I, I yeah. feel like we lived the life they would never... I mean, obviously, have. everybody's going to say that. Every generation is going to say, oh, ours was the best, ours was the best. But no, I but, uh, but, like but look, wha- I think what's different in our generation, even compared to my dad. like 80s is different. Listen, we're yeah, a different breed. We've seen both worlds. Yeah. We were part of nothing, and then we are part of the change yeah, and everything. Yeah. We witnessed it. So I think that shift will never happen again. No, I don't no. think it will. I mean, no. it's it will happen. It will happen from, like, tech to tech to tech yeah. to better tech. Yeah. But it will never go from nothing to this. From nothing to tech, yeah. But we lived that, and that's priceless. Because I remember that. I remember thinking, I looked sexy as hell <laughs> carrying, <laughs> carrying carrying on a what? strap a box this big okay and it had the strap it was like a briefcase and it had a phone that goes in it and that was the mobile phone what is that hold on it was a box like this big a box and it had a strap like okay a, like a bag 
you and mean the phone was on top. The phone was bigger than Marge. Oh, you mean Anise? And that was the mobile phone. Like uh, you'd walk with it in the street. Yeah, the Ganas. Remember the first the one? Box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The I remember that. Yeah, that yeah. And I remember. I thought I was the shit. I was looking <laughs> around with that, and I'd be like, "Sorry, one second. <laughs> or the pagers. Hello. Or the pagers. Yeah, yeah. someone oh paged God. me. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh my like, God, that was insane. That yeah. was like so crazy to us. Like yeah. the things that came. And, and the dial, the dial-in internet, dude, the sound. Right? They will never know, dude. If I got, I've had. Okay, so probably about 18 WhatsApps, Instagram, YouTube, all sent to me during this podcast. Yeah. Now, if it was back in the day, you know what would have heard? We would have heard... Do you remember that radiation sound whenever you got... Yeah, If there was a TV on or something like that, you get... And you'd be like, I got a text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a text, They'll never understand the struggles that we No, or when you're trying when you're trying to hide your your phone from your parents, you know, while you're sitting with them or a guy's calling you and then the vibration goes on and you're like, who is it? We're like, it's not me. The vibration, it was like literally a truck parking. Like, it wasn't like... thingy. But you remember the the uh, the first Nokia that came out, the change your face. Of course. And you can get all the different faces. Of course. See, it's boring now. You can't even change the battery. Like, right? And remember, like, yeah. you'd have to make that. There was like a big life decision that you'd have to make after school when your friend begged you to swap batteries with them. I know. Because there's a thing. And you'd have to actually think, that is so true. how close are we? Because mm-hmm. can I go without my battery to make his life better? And you'd literally take off your battery. Uh, yeah. You'd give it to him. You take his shitty battery that's got like a bar left on it. Yeah. Kind of thing. So real friendships were made and real bonds know, right? over that, right? No, but I'll tell you something funny. I actually have a collection of all the phones that ever came out. Uh, I do, yeah, yeah, I do. Do you have a StarTech? Do you remember the Motorola StarTech? Everything, yeah. everything. The Flip, everything. The yeah. Sidekick. I have everything. The Banana. The first Nokia. Every, yeah. every. I have them with me. Some are broken. I never gave my phones away. All really? the iPhone generations. At a certain point, I bought a Virtue, but I regret it. Virtue, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, why did I even buy that? It's because, the, you know, the, the image. The, no, it wasn't the 24 image. 24-hour concierge. Yes. And then you call them and you're like, hello? And they're like, hi. And I'm, Hi, I don't really need anything right now. No, so, <laughs> so so this is why I bought a virtue. It was not even to show show yeah. off because like my circle is very small. Mm. But when they told me there's an assistant, like you could yeah, press yeah, a button, hours. and then I was like, yeah. I don't have to hire an assistant. But then she's but like, Did you ever do anything with it? Yeah, I sent flowers once. <laughs> That's it. Right. That was, that was it. In you London. You paid four million dirhams to send flowers. No, right? yeah. But I still have it. And I'm like, I'm going to keep it until like it's like very old. And I'm mm. going to like, you know, have a masterpiece. But I have everything. I'll, I'll send you a picture of the a lot collection. Of yeah. Yeah. No, no, don't send me a picture. Let me see them. I don't trust you. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> 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 I would have came with an empty bag <laughs> for sure. Let's do a quick fire round. Okay. What scares you the most in life? Um, Losing someone I love. Very good answer. When was the last time you cried? You were like, when yesterday I saw you. Yes, yes, yesterday I was watching a movie. Oh, yeah. I always I easily cry. Yeah. Like the tears are on, like waiting on in the parking lot. <laughs> what? What would you like to be remembered for? I never. Okay. I in one sentence, on your gravestone. One sentence. I know you're a bit full of yourself and you want to put a lot of stuff on there. But <laughs> can I have two sentences? You can have two, it's not. I, I would have the, wor- the word rebel because okay. I, I rebelled on all my fears and yeah. all the norms and all that. And and then I would like the word kindness because I've, I believe that, you know, y- we are not humans until we acknowledge other humans and give. Yeah. So these two words. I know when you look at it, you're like, uh, th- that person was like, you know, bipolar or something. Hold on, I asked you for one sentence you challenged my see this is why i think you're just challenging why? people you're like i'm gonna challenge you mm. i said one sentence you challenged me to give you two yeah. then you gave me two words two words yeah what happened oh, to the rest of the sentence oh you wanted the sentence yeah did you think i said one word i, s- I thought you said one word oh, I'm, I'm, dyslexic. Say, hold on a bit. <laughs> I'm dyslexic it happens hold yeah. on one sentence well obviously she was a rebel with kindness no 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 if it's a sentence i would yeah. not go that way um Actually, it's 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 a quote. It's one of my favorite quotes that I love so much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's by Rumi, and it says, "Between Never. what's right and wrong, there is a garden. I'll meet you there." That's pretty nice. So it's yeah, it, yeah. you know how life is not yeah, yeah. what you think is right and wrong. There's always like gray. There's yeah, yeah. those shades in between. Yeah. So I love that quote. 
It's like nobody's ever right, nobody's ever wrong. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Rumi was very ama- amazing. Amazing. So like, I mean, before he became the, you know, 40 year old white woman's icon, <laughs> he just started. Do you, do you know, notice that? No. Yeah, th- like he went through a stage where every, you know, every new spiritual person would just start reading Rumi and all that stuff, and it would just, he'd be the icon for spirituality. Really? Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big thing. Uh, to me, he was, he, to me, he's an ic- icon for like, spirituality love and peace yeah like the amount of retreats i've been to where somebody's got a roomy tattoo on their really? shoulder really oh like, god oh. no yeah there's another one an iranian one called hafiz he's very good i think i've heard well. some of his yeah give me one of your good. favorites um never has the sun told the moon to forget the the saying say what no no i forgot it <laughs> It was something like, never has the sun told the moon, look how much light I give you. Oh, got it, got it. Um, with a love like this. To show yeah, yeah, I know. But, but no, his I name in English, his now. name is in, in English is not that, right? Hafiz, yeah. Hafiz? Yeah. It's not Atticus? Who's Atticus no. then? Never has the, I have to Google this now. Google, the, go away. The sun. Google away. The moon. Uh-huh. What? Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. I love it. See? I, love I mean, it. I love it. Not enough to remember it, but it was, it was very good. You did it close enough. Yeah, close enough, right? Close I said never has sun and moon. Good job. Just yeah? don't tattoo it on you because right? that's <laughs> you, you, that'll be like a disaster. Dude, I told you I can't do it, man. I can't do it. What's the most, <laughs> um, not important, but which, which tattoo that you have means m- the most to you? No, everything. Everything is a story. You don't have one that kind of... Actually... If you had to remove them all and leave one, which one would be left? I would never remove any. Like, uh, that idea doesn't even come to mind. I mean... No, so this this is it, right? Um, every every tattoo I have is a story of my life. A lesson, okay. or a, a lesson or a lesson that I went through, okay? The latest one I got is this one. So okay. this is um, an angel holding a gun. Holding an AK-47. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this one is an angel holding a bow. Okay. Okay. So what these two mean is that, you know, I've always felt guilty for standing up for myself against people that hurt me, broke me, destroyed me. Because as an empath, you feel bad for people, mm. even the ones who do you wrong. Yeah. It's funny. It's like it's. I sit down sometimes like, Sarah, you're ridiculous. You feel bad for someone who's done all of this for you. But we do. That's mm. our nature. But then I learned a lesson recently that you can still be an angel with a bow that you know spreads love and kindness and all that. But in certain situations where you have to stand up for yourself, you got to get your halo dirty a little yeah. bit. So that's why, you know, hence the one holding the AK-47 with a covered face. Kill them. <laughs> not kill them. It's like yeah. fight for yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, not fight others. Fight for you, you know, yeah. for yourself. Because I feel like you cannot be spreading love and, you know, sprinkling love and positivity in this world and forgetting who you, you yourself. Yeah. And this is why I am so into the Johnny Depp case right now. Yeah, dude. My God. I've she's weird and she's a psycho. She is. Like there's something very wrong she with her. She is. She is. Uh, she's not a human being. Like uh, she's a. To me, like some people are just a waste of oxygen. But I've been watching the case. Like I've t- taken off work. Like yeah. my business partners are going to kill me. Ten hours every day, sitting down, watching the trial every single day. Be why? Not because I love Johnny Depp, but because I was with narcissists and I never mm. fought for myself. And you know, when narcissists, when you leave a narcissist completely, mm. they start a smear campaign where they go around telling people shit about you. Mm-hmm and stuff about you to that make it to make you them. look to make you look bad yeah, so yeah. they can justify why they do you bad yeah, yeah. so i i went through that phase where the smear campaign happened and i was just quiet the whole time i never defended myself i was quiet but then when i look at johnny depp i'm like finally someone is standing up to a narcissist mm. and fighting back so he's fighting not just for himself but on the behalf of a lot of people that mm. were abused physically mentally and i, I never saw a lot of men as well yeah because this could be one of the first you know, um, cases where the man wins against yeah. a female abuser, which there are a lot around the world That's that it true. happens to, that you don't get to hear it, and 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 it's true. It's like if the a lot of those recordings, if the roles were reversed, they wouldn't even be up for con- conversation. There, there wouldn't even be a case. They'll be right? jail. Yeah, yeah, straight away. Like exactly. So it's, it's very exactly. weird. Exactly. It's very interesting as well, and 
My dog sat on the beanie. Mm, it's yeah, just so weird. My, do- <laughs> my dog sat on a beanie. Like, what was that face all about? I, I, yeah. I, I can't. I can't. My God. Uh, by the way, have you seen the latest video? I died. C- I cracked up. So, you know, uh, when the last day in, tr- in court was happening with the cross examination, not the op- not the closing statement, the day before. Is it finished? The court, yeah, it's finished. The verdict is today or tomorrow. Okay. So they caught her on camera. You know how she always acts like she's writing yeah, yeah, sticky yeah. notes yeah, yeah. and passing it to, uh, to, the, to the lawyer. They, they, the camera, they zoomed in and her pen was not even touching the paper. And she's writing in the air. It's like, you know, taking notes. And then she passed the paper to the lawyer. It had and nothing on it. No. Yeah, she's weird. She's, she's so weird. She's, she's so weird. weird. And she's she, weird. He's been abused for so long and it's not fair. She's weird. And the fact that like, you know, we're never getting another Captain Jack Sparrow. You can never replace him in that never, role ever. And, ever. And the fact that she ruined that for everyone. Yeah. I mean, forget about all the stuff she did to him. Just the fact that I'm not going to see Captain Jack Sparrow again in another role that's is, true. is enough. Not only for that me to fantastic hate beast, yeah. Jack Sparrow, he lost all his jobs. But then but they offered it back to him and he said he will never take it. No, they didn't offer it back. He said if they did. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought they offered him Jack Sparrow no, again. No, no. He, was they, like, no. he said if they did. But right now, since, like, look, it's obvious. Yeah. Amber doesn't have money. Yeah. He knows he's not getting money out of this case. But I think he asked for this case to be aired. Yeah, just to show. Just to show the truth, his story. Did you see the bit about um, her pledging the money? When they were like, so you donated the money. She was like, yeah, like yeah, I pledged I it all. Pledged she was it like, all. no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> you don't listen to me. Did you donate the money? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I pledged, I pledged it all. She's like, nah, bruv. <laughs> That's not what I'm yeah. saying. Uh, it's she, two she different said, I, things. I used them in what? In sina- sina- what is she, what's the word she used? Synonymously or something Synonymously, like that? Yeah, Synonymously, yeah, yeah. Synonymously, yeah. And but then the lawyer's like, I don't use them yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't use that. And not just that. And she was like, oh, you know, I was going to do it, but Johnny sued me. That was like, and the lawyer was like... 16 was months later. Yeah, that was 16 <laughs> months later, dude. By what the way, you know, doing? they found out today that her case is being paid by her insurance. So you you didn't donate the money because, okay, you're stating that you went through a lawsuit. And your suit, yeah. And your lawsuit cost you millions and millions of dollars, but your insurance is paying for it. It's like, when is your lying going to end? It's, it's just weird. It's, it's crazy. It's just disgusting, and it just shows but you how my people favorite, can be. But my favorite is the TMZ guy. Yeah, from before, and he was just like... He whipped them. Like, yeah. he came in and he whipped them. TMZ, tra- TMZ tried to stop them from, do from from him from taking the stand, but he did it. Really? Yeah, they came to court right the same day, flew their lawyers. Their judge is like, no, you cannot stop it. He was slapped with a subpoena, but he agreed yeah. to do it. But uh, it's it's just crazy. It's but I, but, weird, but yeah. by the way, I'm not shocked. Yeah. I've been through even worse than this. I, I never had a finger chopped, yeah, but yeah. I've been through physical and mental abuse. Mm. And in that way where they m- gaslight you to for you to question your own reality mm. and you get depressed. And even my manager at that time, when she was managing me, she was like, your, your performance is shit. Yeah. She's like, you're not you. You're not Sara. Even people on social media, they're like, you're not yourself. It's they rob you. They, ro- they, they rape your soul. They mm. rob you from your soul every single day. Narcissist. Mm. That's why, like, it's freaking toxic. So I, I completely believe everything he's saying, how he's yeah. feeling, the cycle she put him through. I'm like, God damn it. They never change. They're all the same. Yeah. Man, I don't wish that on anyone, dude. No. Before we leave, who is Sara Al Madri? Who is? Mm. I'm just a girl. A rebe- Looking for a guy. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm just, I, I feel like I'm just a girl. Yeah. I'm just a rebellious girl. I'm. Um, I always say I'm physically 36, spiritually 15. So I'm. I'm just a human being, um, trying to enjoy life. You know, taking it easy, working hard, trying to discover myself and become a better person. But at the same time, I would say it again. I'm just a spiritual. Uh, per, I'm just a sp- spiritual being having a human experience. Mm. That's it. Do you feel like there's anything we missed out? Did we? Do you do, do you know that I'm building an electric car? No, tell me. <laughs> well, you can't bring <laughs> that up at the end. I'm building a, like, an electric car in okay. Europe with my business partners. Okay. And we've we've been doing it for the past um three years okay and now it's coming to a close end and i think we're moving the manufacturing the facility all to to the uae really hypercar and what's the difference between that and a and a tesla it's a hypercar it's completely different it's okay. a sports car I, I can show you a picture, yeah, show a me a picture yeah. for sure so what made you want to build an electric car well, not me to be honest um it, it's my my business partner's dream Budget, yeah and then he has such a contagious energy and he told me you know it's such a man industry and when he said that i was like I'm you're like i'm in i'm in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah man industry yeah, i'm yeah, in yeah. you know i don't believe women should be selling cupcakes and running salons yeah 
So let me show you a picture. How close are you to actually having it a drivable car? Um, uh, either January next year or December this year. Nice. Yeah, it's already uh, the prototype is already f almost done. We do we have to do a crash test and all that. But let me show you. It's called Alexma, and that this the type like the design of this car, the series is called Sarab. Okay. Because the car will only have like a few pieces made, and you not not everybody can buy it. You have to be vetted very intensely. So it's like Sarab in Arabic is like Mirage. Yeah, so yeah. everyone can see it, but not everyone can have it. Let me just show you a picture. And the designers and the engineers that worked with us are ex uh, Lamborghini, ex Conics. Like they 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 come from like a background of that. Wow. I have one picture. You never stop, you. huh? No. Why should we stop? We live once. If I don't discover what ev like all the gifts God have given me, and live just but a w when is enough enough? It's never enough. I, I you only stop when you die. So for you, this whole business thing is not a monetary challenge. No, it's it's growth. It's fun. It's uh, challenges. It's um, building teams. It's leadership. My God, the things I've learned from being an entrepreneur. No school can teach me this. Mm. And um, it's just the whole like experience that comes with it. And definitely, we all do it to to gain monetary. Like we all want money, right? Mm. But money is a priority. Not uh, money is a necessity, not a priority. Mm -hmm. That means I will not go above and beyond and kill myself and strip myself from everything and mm. step all, all over people just to make money. I will never do that. I have ethics. I have morals. I'm just here to have fun. This is Alexma. Show me, show me. I'm getting excited now. Oh, she's sexy. Actually, send me a picture of this, and I'll get it up on the. Uh okay. Ooh. <laughs> Wait. Let me just. Uh, can we show this? Yeah, you can. <laughs> is, uh, I'm glad. I'm, gl I'm glad it it's blurry screen. because yeah. So basically, you're giving one of these away, to me. I'll make you drive it for a day. Oh. Two days, one week, drive. one month. It, the price, the selling price, three million euros. Yesterday's price is not <laughs> tomorrow. Wait, what? How much? Three million euros. Wow, that's a lot. It's a sports car. But that's Here, a lot. If you look at this. Yeah, but that's a lot. This is an opening in the, the car. Way, all the way through. All the way through. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so who buys this? Look, three million euros is Co a collectors. Is a house. It's a collectors, collectors, enthusiasts. Like it's not for everybody. How many pieces are you making? Uh, I think. 100 or less maybe 50 we're still debating but this is just like the first edition which is like a sports uh hybrid car but then we are going to do normal car for city life for everyday use for normal people that everyone can afford but this is our print in the market that we're doing first like we want to be known for this but the car like you would tell me there's a lot of hybrid cars mm. there's a lot of sports cars that look sexy and beautiful and all that mm. But there's a lot of technology to it that has not been done before. Wow. But, I, but I'm not going to say it now because... You can uh, definitely uh, get NFT attached to that as well. Oh, yes, definitely. Sure. We, were, we were planning that, but I'm still learning a lot about mm. the NFT world. Marketing is not easy in the yeah, NFT NFTs world. Yeah, NFTs are a crazy world. No. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with me. It I feel like we need to do two or three more I know in the this future. Was can I be honest? Mm. This is the most funnest interview I've ever done. Good. Usually it's always the boring stuff. No, I've done one that was very deep and emotional. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. But by far, this is my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> uh, that's good. I appreciate yeah. it because you did give me the challenge and I was like, okay, no. I'll Hold be on. Are you we cannot end this without doing the accents. Which accents? I don't have accents. I just thought I'd just put you in there. You just lied to me? <laughs> Wait, what Did accents? You? What accents? I can do an English one. I can do like a lot of it. So you, you tell me whatever you like. Sorry, what was that? You tell me whatever you like and we do it. Is that your English one? Give me a Spanish accent. No, I like Spanish. No, I know Spanish. I cannot <laughs> do I can do. I can do Indian. I can do Egyptian English. I can do uh, French. I Let's can see your French. Look, um, uh, this interview is very nice, and uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, but right now, I have to go and buy some baguette. Are so you going to the? Oh no, I can't say. Can I? Say Damn, what? Damn, this show! I can't say a lot of stuff, right? No, you can't. Let's keep it kosher. Let's keep it halal. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, not my show. My show. I can say whatever I want. No, I mean I'm talking the about show. Yeah, I'm talking about this show. Yeah. Um, you're going tonight, right? To the place. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to the place. I like that. <laughs> 
you guys <laughs> you guys will never know what we're talking about you go to the place tonight right رايح المكان لا تخاف اكيد 100% اوكي انا مو رايح بس uh, i'll see you there <laughs> boom it's been absolutely amazing to have you on thank you so and much we will definitely definitely get another one going I, i feel like maybe we need to get another guest on and host it together yeah we'll have maybe fun that's, uh, someone's that's crazy we'll like us yeah 100% yeah, i mean uh, yeah. most of my circle so All we'll right. do that guys thank you so much for watching i've been aj she's been doctor sara al madani thank you so much guys <laughs> there you go <laughs> boom <laughs> <laughs>